Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sorry for that technical difficulty. The excitement was jumping. So, we are going to give thanks to a few people before we begin our service today. We'll give thanks to the technical Sarah Fortete. And then we'll give thanks to our video director, Judith Mensa Anna. We'll give thanks to our ministers, Sek- um, Zachary Sekinatu. And we'll give thanks to those who supported the Good Friday Miracle Service. Highly esteemed Pastor Moses Aloti. These, these are the people who have helped the Good Friday Service to be possible. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful to each and everyone who has helped to contribute to this service. Amen. I'm very excited that we've been able to do this. As um, a very sad announcement to be made at the end of service today. So, God bless you all for joining. Let us pray. Father, thank you for giving us this opportunity to be here today. Grant us the ability to do go deeper and do more. For you, in your church, in your ministry, and in your doing. And let it be of your will, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. (laughs) All right. So, all right. So, we are beginning with the book. Of John chapter 19 and the verse number 30. John chapter 19 and the verse number 30. Can someone help me read it? It's the highlighted one on screen. John. Chapter 19, Chapter 19 verse, verse number 30. 30. When, when Jesus had tasted it, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and released his spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. So I'm basing today's preaching on John chapter 19 and the verse number 30. Our title for today's message is a great day of suffering. On this day, every year, Christians gather together at various church events to praise and celebrate or honor or commemorate the Lord for all that he has done for us and all that he continues to do for us as Christians. And we commemorate what he did for us Years ago, the blood he shed for us on the cross. But it will surprise you that most Christians that go to these various church events during Easter don't really know the meaning of why they are going there. They are just going because they've seen one artist that is performing and want to experience them for themselves. But some don't really know the meaning of the day. I'm going to, I do this in each and every one of my messages, and so I'm going to take it one by one. So when we say a great day, it means a super day, a wonderful day, an experience, a day of wonder, a day of something extra. That doesn't always happen. Like today, we've not been outside before having a service like this. However, it was one of my intentions. Yes, it was one of my intentions. But today, it's a special day. And it's a great day. So that's what it means. A day which is great. Now when we come to the word of suffering, it means of pain, of sorrow, of undelight. It's not pleasant. It's not good. It's, it's, it's not something to celebrate. So when I say a great day of suffering, 
it shouldn't really excite you because you really need to understand the purpose of this day amen according to john chapter 19 and the verse number 13 the previous verses will find the modes and the ways as to how jesus christ was killed on the cross and finally gave up the ghost we find out that he was crowned with um, a crown of thorns we find out that he was a cross was placed on his back and they were beating him all the way to Golgotha. it's like from Accra to Kumasi so that's where he was walking to so so that I will say I will confidently say that none of you have that amount of love that Jesus Christ had for all of us as his people. Mm -hmm. I will confidently say it. Because had I had the time or the effort, I would have shown you a short clip of a video of those who attempted to simulate the Jesus movement. Which actually they were doing it on the streets live. And someone caught a video of it. There was one video of a guy that was doing it. They were beating, blood was everywhere. So here's what happened. On that particular day, his enemies heard that he was playing the role of Jesus Christ. And they are conscious of the fact that Jesus Christ will be beaten. So what did they do? They came to beat him. So he couldn't stand it. The beating, it became too much. So he stood up and he started kicking them. Yes. If I had a video, I would have shown you. But there's no time now. The point is that none of you can do that. And that is why we must take all the efforts and give all the praise to whom honor is due. Some don't take their day seriously. Some don't even believe in their day. Which is very sad. Because it shows that you absolutely lack knowledge or truth or understanding. Amen. According to John chapter 19 and the verse number 30, it says it is finished. That's the only phrase I'll pick there. That phrase over there simply means that all is done. His will has been fulfilled. Now I'll ask each and every one of you who are here at this Good Friday miracle service. Have you fulfilled your will yet? Are you done with your work on earth? Should you die tomorrow? Are you confident enough to tell the Lord that I have fulfilled my will on earth and I am here to account for it? Will you be confident enough to say that? Some of us, we've received already a revelation to our call or our will or purpose on this earth. And that is the most important thing. Once you are able to figure it out and you do as much as you can, that is it. The rest is human support. But immediately you figure out your purpose on earth, that is it. Some have figured it out, but something is still dragging them behind. Can you? Can you really? Some of you are here. You know your will. You know where you are meant to be by your standing there. Who really? Tell me. I'm talking to everyone. Yes. It's not something that I'm talking to one person. It's everyone. It's everyone. It is finished. When you are on your deathbed or your sick bed, can you say those words? Will you be confident of saying those words? Will you be able to utter them? Because by then your faith will not show anything. If you say those words, then meaning your faith, everything is done on this earth. The rest continues up there. The rest continues up there. If you say that, then meaning where we? 
But if you don't say that, you will continue to lie on your sick bed till you say that sentence. And always there has to be something. A sort of suffering that you have to go through. A great day of suffering. Today, today the, the sun was shining very beautifully. But now, it looks like it wants to rain. And this signifies that it actually happened. Well, this, that, this, this didn't happen yesterday. You can't just say it's by coincidence. No. It happens every Easter. Every seven, every Good Friday, it happens. This is not the best, this is not the second. At times, even rains. Will you be confident enough? So, number one, as a Christian, you are meant to commemorate the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because that is the most important thing. Why do you think that when you are dedicating yourself to Jesus Christ, you have to say, I believe in the death of Jesus Christ, and I believe he resurrected on the third day? Why do you think you have to say that? Or you think it's just for saying it? Okay. You, that's all Christianity is about. You have to believe that very sentence, that very event. That is why we've selected a special day to bring it out to many people. Hallelujah. It is finished. Sa. Kasa, asa. It is finished. So there was a sequence of everything that happened. And that is what we are commemorating. I recommend to you to watch only the section of the Jesus movement where they were sending him um, to go gather. There you will see that it was an extreme thing. And even what is in the movie is not half of what happened that day. It was very extreme. Imagine somebody beating you with a slim cane. Not even the static one, the one that is flexible. A slim cane to your body direct. Yes, I shall proof directly. And they took him there. And they made him taste bitter wine. After he tasted that, he knew that everything that was written in the Old Testament has been fulfilled. So that is why he said, it is finished. Have you fulfilled your life's purpose? And if you have, are you really sure about it? Are you really sure about it that you fulfilled it and that you've done it all right? Are you really sure? The day, the time they were killing him, just like this, very shady weather. And after he said it is finished, then it rained, and all of them couldn't stand it. He stand there, I grabbed that bevel. It was that extreme. It's not even half of what happens in this country. But then again, I'm making a point. Have you fulfilled your life's purpose? That is the question I came here to ask you. If there is something that you need to do to fulfill your life's purpose, please, now is the time to do it. Don't wait for people to tell you that, oh, time has soon. You have to do it. You are getting old, though. You have to do it. You have to do it before people even say that it is time for you to do it. Don't stand there and wait for them. If you know there is something that you must do, if God has given you a revelation about what you must do to be able to access your life's purpose or your will on this earth for, for the Lord, you need to do it. Now, because time is going, the world is coming to an end. It will not be static forever. If you are still baby, what are you doing about it? What possibly are you doing about it? I want to know. Are you actually preparing? 
because it seems like I can't say yes to Basa. We are still baby, yes, I am. But now is the time. Do some of you read me say? Okay. There was this headline a few days ago about um, the this demonic thing being registered in the country. I won't say the name. It begins with L and ends with a Q. Now this is disgusting. And you still need more signs to know that the world is coming to an end. Do you really? How many signs do you need? Or you, okay, you want the sky to open before you see that, hey, yes, you back. That was why, that is why there are many churches around today. But it depends on what they believe on. Don't just walk into any church. No church, no one, open now I read. Mm. You don't just enter any church like that. Enter the church that believes in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is how the Bible says we can find prophets. We don't find prophets by them prophesying to us and telling me your mother's name. That is childish behavior. That is very childish. How do people do that? Preacher! You do that. Be honest, if you are going to look for it, if that's not what you do, that's what you ask. Tell me my mother's name. The Bible says, if you want to find a prophet, you must know if they believe in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That alone shows that they are a prophet. And I'll tell you the reason why. The Bible explains it. The Bible explains it. So go and read it. Yes. That's what the Bible is meant for. But people don't read these things. So they find the day as, hey, the day we are going to Peru. Some are at Peru by now. Dancing. Singing. Shouting. I'm going to go. And we are here. They will say that, oh, spirit, we are too spiritual. Go oh, pass, sorry, dude. Don't let that discourage you. Momunka, there's something in my life that I call, let them see. If you say, say it. If you are really determined, do not allow anything to stop you or hinder you from fulfilling your life's purpose. If you know there is a way to pass, to fulfill your life's purpose, please do it now. You are not getting any younger. You are not getting any younger. We are still growing and growing and growing. And one day, you are able to ask for if If sickness does not put you down, then it's an accident. Or you yourself will die. But the words are important. It is finished. Can you say it? Will you be able to say it? I mean, look at the scope of your life. Take a look at your life. Can you say that what God sent you to do on this earth, you've done it? That is why evangelism is important. That is why services like these are important. For these things are not meant for church services, normal church services like Sunday service and all that. This must be said to the world for everyone to hear. It is one of the most urgent messages I've wanted to preach now. And I believe that even by this short message, you've been blessed. I don't think I need to share with you more on why you should believe in it. Hey, don't do that too. So, yes, the death and the resurrection is very important. Did I tell you why we've gone away for so long? Okay, let me explain. I had a revelation about this thing in the month of March 2023, about the time we did the Global Communion Service. And as I had this revelation, 
I gave you a word. It was three in one. One of them was the word and evangelism. And I told you that in that month, we'll be doing a series of events. We'll be sponsoring the word. We're going for Healing Jesus Nations campaigns. And what have you? I told you all that at March Global Communion Service. In that whole month, from then on till the next two weeks, we didn't have service. Guess why? There was a certain day we were having a Healing Jesus Nations campaign. Just right here. On this particular day. Now, it will be funny to you, eh? But I saw two bells up here. Just here. Look up. Just here. I didn't take heed to them. People have always said they are bad animals. But I've not really taken a heed to it. So I left them there. I didn't react or anything. So I, as usual, as you set up here, I set up like that. And we're starting the service. Now guess what happened? One or so jackmats my back. Now, in the middle of the service, as ministration was going on, right there and then, a wind from nowhere, in Framamboyo, in Riano, a wind from nowhere just blew and hit the thing down. It almost hit everything down. So that should show you the power of evangelism. And that is why it's urgent in this time. Do you think that just happened for no reason? It's not a coincidence. The devil knows that evangelism will empty hell and fill heaven. And so he will not allow you. So that is why I'm encouraging everyone today. Go and evangelize. It's the number one mandate in the Bible. In Matthew chapter 28 and verse number 19. I don't need it on the screen. It says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is what it says. Everyone is meant to evangelize. It shouldn't only be the pastor's way. It shouldn't only be the church's way. Stop doing that. Once you become a believer of Christ, or a Christian, you are mandated to evangelize to everyone. That is your main will. That is number one. Apart from that, everyone has a second will. Everyone has what they need to do to please the Lord before they depart from this earth. So one year, no. Now we are that one now. You still haven't completed your will. You need to complete everything. And I mean everything. You need to complete everything. Don't, who are you leaving the other one? To, for who to fulfill? It is for you. So do it as you need to do it. Amen. So, this day is a day in commemoration of what Jesus did years ago on the Mount of Golgotha. But guess what? There's going to be a resurrection on Sunday. It will amaze you. But when it happened in those times, neither did they believe that, oh, it can happen like that, that, hey, yes, you better. They didn't believe it because they saw him up there saying it is finished. And he bowed his head. That was it. And he gave up his spirit. So they didn't, they didn't believe it. It's like, for example, someone dying here and saying it is finished. And I say that tomorrow, they will resurrect. Sorry, on Sunday they will resurrect. It's like saying that. It's like saying that. Which is a very serious thing to say. Because people will be asking, into what if he doesn't resurrect? That way people will be asking. That meaning they tell you as somebody think. But listen, it doesn't mean that that was a prophetic declaration. If the prophetic declaration does not come to pass, brother, sister, it means it's not the will of the Lord. That is not what the Lord wants at the time. What he wants is what has happened. So even if you resurrect that person, oh, I'm sorry, because everyone has an end. Everyone has a beginning. Your beginning was at the hospital. 
So today, I want to encourage you, each and every one, go out and win souls. Go out and evangelize. Go out and win souls. Go out and evangelize unto many people. That is the number one mandate on this earth for all of us as Christians. And we must be able to fulfill it accordingly before the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. At, at this moment in time, the message has come to an end. So, stand to your feet and let us bless this day. Amen. Let us begin to thank the Lord. Let us bless His holy name. Thank Him for all that He has done for you, all that He is doing, and all that He is about to do for you. As the blood has been shed for you on this day, thank Him and bless His holy name for all that He has done. Father, we thank you for this day and this time that you've given unto us. We are thankful for all that you've done for us through the month of March and all that you are doing for us in the month of April and all that is to come in the month of April. Your word says we should count it all joy in every situation and in every problem. So, Father Lord, strengthen us, empower us to do so. But we may count it all joy, even when it seems so hard to. And we will know that you will never give us more than we can ever handle. So help us, Lord. Help us to believe more. Help us to fulfill our will and our purpose on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the glorious presence of the Lord.